Road Atlanta marks a return to the United States for the first time in February as the Velocity Online Racing IRA Teen Series heads back to Georgia for what is race number six on the 2024 calendar. Michigan Raceway Road Atlanta plays host to a 50-lap feature tonight, and we're getting set and qualifying right now with seven minutes remaining on the timing charts. Expecting faster laps than ever seen before in this series as drivers are already taking times before our main race gets going. Welcoming you all back to FTN on this Saturday. Only going to be one broadcast tonight, and it's going to be all road course racing racing for the next 50 laps here in Road Atlanta. I'm David Kreutz, producing and commentating alongside Gary Godso, and right now, with drivers already taking times, the action has only just begun. Bruno Miranda finds himself at the top of the board with a 104.703, which is already the currently Record time in a qualifying session at Road Atlanta in this series. Of course, times are still not permanent and official. We could see some drivers go even quicker, but already we are seeing provisional qualifying times unlike anything we've witnessed before. Miranda at the line is still going to be your pole sitter by two tenths of a second and finds himself the quickest at this rapid circuit here in Atlanta. Gary, as we get things going for the first time tonight, of course, qualifying on the move, we're already seeing drivers rev up and put the best times they can as we're getting set for races that's going to have high speeds and a lot of strategy packed into only 50 laps. I got Georgia on my mind today, and uh, Julian with 550 left to play here up to the top with a 104.521 provisionally on the pole. Uh, yeah, Indy cars don't come here in real life, but this track uh, does pair well with this formula. Pretty good, fast, long straights, some twisty sections, uh, some uh, passing areas at the at a uh, bottom of a very bottom straightaway in a hill uh, that open up into a passing area going into a chicane, uh, ups and downs and throughs and you name blind turns and. This, this track is really, um, and again, I'm not much of a road course guy, but this track is really a lot of fun uh, when you got it. You, it just does, starts to develop a flow, kind of at some points through the S's when you're coming downhill, kind of makes you feel like you're a downhill skier a little bit, and you're kind of sloshing in between the uh, the poles, so to speak. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have a good one here. Four, now just under five to play, and Miranda goes back to the pole with a 104.246. Now, real world uh, records around here. Uh, they're actually setting real-world records. Uh, the fastest uh, car in terms of an official session is an LNP1 with a time of uh, 107.056. Uh, that was Christian Klein uh, in the 2008 Petit Le Mans race. Uh, the unofficial track record, uh, and the IndyCar still have a little bit to go to get to that one, is uh, uh, one of the Ferrari test drivers brought the, uh, the venerable 2003 uh, Ferrari F1 car here that... Uh, Michael Schumacher used to drive, among others, and uh, put up a 101.2 here. So Indy cars are about a second and a half off that one. But uh, in the neighborhood, and it's going to be fun. We're going to see compound changes. We're going to see more than one pit stop. Uh, maybe some strategy play out. Should be a good one. We have a decent car, size card field. And uh, with this way that the track is uh, they're really designed, I, we shouldn't really run into a lot of uh, lap traffic. But we'll see. This is a great track. We're going to have fun. Stick around. And RA drivers getting set up with their fastest laps in the final minutes of this session. You look at Pedro by Bell there. He's going to be second on the board now, about a tenth and a half off of Miranda. And he's only got three laps into this point. Every driver right now running on alternates. Mandatory compound swap tonight, much like what we saw at Zandvoort two weeks prior. The road course racing, multiple compounds are at play, and the push to pass is a back. Ten uses only are going to be allowed for each and every one of these drivers. So that's going to be another variable you got to keep in mind as this race goes on. The qualifying record coming into tonight was a 104.978 held by Julian Altena previously in last season. The race lap record was a 105.871. I'm expecting both of those to get broken seeing we're on pace for the first record to get nearly demolished by a full second. Projected 
course pit strategy. That's something we got to keep in mind. And about 18 lap stint is what we've been given as a prediction. So we're going to see most likely a two stop strategy for every driver tonight. And they're going in and out of pit road to get themselves ready to get back on the track time and time again. You want to wait until the final moments if you want to really throw down that fast lap, get the tires warm, get a little less fuel, and maybe you'll be light enough to put down a few extra hundreds of a second. That could make all the difference right now, but Miranda leads the timing sheets by over a tenth. Yeah, let's uh, let's ride along with somebody here and uh, see what uh, we got going on. Pick a driver. Let me know who we got, who, who we want to ride around with. And we got Bruno Miranda to ride around with. He's back on Bruno the track Miranda. right now, All going right. to maybe beat his pull time. We'll find out. So where he is on the track right now is he's uh, heading down the long straight into uh, one of the few passing zones here. This is a chicane. Uh, it is a 10A, 10B. And then all of a sudden, you're going uphill. The back end of the car is going to get real white right about here. There's your pit road entrance off to the right. Sweeping right-hander can pretty much take it flat out. Start finish line right there. Maximizes the entire racetrack. There's this little pit road right there, or a little access road. You can get the left wheels on that, and then you go up the hill. And right here, the entry to uh, what would be turn two, blind. You don't see it coming. You just got to know it's there. Now the kind of the slalom portion. I was talking about the skiing there. And you come into a uh, pretty fast corner number five. A lot of runoff area. And then the, the, this track is a little bit uh, shaped like a like a bent guitar or a ribeye steak, right? Now, this is the bone portion right here. Kind of a double apex turn area. And then the long blasting straight away down here. Uh, we got in, right, in, right underneath some aviation uh, uh, warning balls there for the, uh, the lines. Down the long straight, down the hill where we picked up the lap. Into the chicane. High braking zone. And he'll, he'll, he'll watch him switch it back really quick. Just flicking the, flicking the wrists. Top of the hill, really light right here. Downhill, car likes to settle there. Car squats. Car used to get damaged there, and the uh, the left front wing used to get damaged there quite a bit. Uh, there was a kind of a landmine in the track, and uh, Indy cars would kind of automatically uh, get damaged there. There you see Bruno going through the top portion of the hill, just blindly. You just got to have faith it's there. You got to have faith the car is going to stick. Down the slalom area, back in the five, a lot of runoff area there. They'll use it all. And then back down into the, the guitar neck or the, the bone of the ribeye, so to speak. It's fun track. A lot, lot of, lot of uh, opportunities to, to have fun racing here. A couple of opportunities to pass. And uh, we're getting ready to go racing. And Miranda might just be, uh, nail down this pole with a 104.2. And it looks like Miranda does a lot of expertise in these short qualifying sessions. It looks like Miranda to the top of the board yet again, and he finds himself the quickest by 45 one thousandths of a second. Bruno Miranda to grab the pole position here in Road Atlanta, but it looks like there's a few more drivers on the track with a minute and 15 left. Can anyone take that time and go over? It looks like for the time being, nobody close enough. Julian Altena going to yeah, park either. it. Pedro Bybel is on the way, but it looks like really no reason realistic threat Miranda's for the time game. being. Orsai still on the road, I think. Um, let's see if we get him. There he goes. And then, Did he improve? I don't think he did, but uh, got a couple cars trying to finish out. Jordan Hale. Uh, By Bell actually on the track going 48 seconds. He might, yeah, he'll, he'll get to the uh, start finish line in, in 48 seconds here. Down the hill. Into the breaking zone for the chicane. 10A, 10B. Then uh, 11 top of the hill and then a little bit of a straight then 12 here's 12 12 the last corner and uh he's slowing down before getting there he probably realized he didn't have the delta to get there so he's going to go ahead and call it quits i think we're going to go racing here now Looks like everyone's done with their qualifying runs. The final driver to make a jump was Jordan Hale. We remember that it was his first race at Zandvoort two weeks ago. He got it done for a top 10 finish there. He'll be starting in eighth tonight, it looks like. With qualifying over, we've got ourselves a full starting grid. So without further ado, just moments away from getting this race started, how's about we take a look at your lineup for the Road Atlanta Grand Prix. Qualifying's concluded, and Bruno Miranda's at the top of the board with a 104. 
104.246, the new VOR qualifying record at this track. He is going to be able to take that record by just over seven tenths of a second. Takes it from the previous record holder of Julian Altena, and it'll be Julian starting in second with a 104.291. Pedro Baibel is going to be third, and it'll be Cedric Holmboom in the fourth position with a 104.756. Patrick Zovazzi will round out the top five with a 104.873, and Alric Van den Bosch with a sixth place start to 104.958. Any of the top six times would have been good for pole position last season. Keep that in mind. That's how quick these drivers have gotten. Nearly seven tenths of a second improvement for the pole sitter and sixth place this season would have been top last season. Craig Forsythe going to be in seventh with Jordan Hale then in eighth. Sebastian Kinder will be in the ninth spot and it'll be Matthias Strauss rounding out the top ten with a 105.253 there to conclude the top ten. All right, rounding out the remainder of the field, Hunter Smith, 11th, uh, Finian Dakuna uh, there with uh, 12. I guess I'm going to nickname him the the Big Dakuna. Uh, let's see, let's move on. Uh, John Christensen, 13th, Lover, 14th, Hugo Gallas uh, with that Backfire Motorsports entry, 15th, Dan in 16th, and Jonathan Digg, 17th, 17 car fields. That's going to round out. They are going to do a full pace lap here, so we'll have plenty of time to set this up. Give you a good view of the race course one more time before they get up to speed. But I think we're going to be in for a good one today. Uh, definitely two stops. Uh, and uh, you can play a little strategy. So looking at the strategy, um, I'm going to reorder my top, uh, my, my overlay here and uh, give you an idea of uh, what we got for tires. So Bruno on reds. Julian on primes. Pedro, Cedric on reds. Silvazzi on a prime. Van den Bosch on a red. Forsyth on a prime. Hale on a red. So Seb Kinder and Strauss are on primes. So that's what your top team, top 10 look like. And it's a completely mixed strategy uh, among the top 10. So it's going to be interesting. These cars uh, with these black, uh, the, the prime tires are going to want to um, make hay now. They got to make these passes early on these cars that are on the softer uh, alternate tires. The softer alternate tire cars, they're going to want to put as much space between themselves and the rest of the field because they got to build up that delta. So when they do make that stop, and they're going to make at least two of them that they can pop out and not have a lot of positions lost. So it's going to be interesting. I like the different strategies that we see going on right now uh, at the front of the field. Remember, push to pass. They got 10 pushes of the button. They got this really long straight uh, between turn 7 and turn 10A that they can do the push to pass there. This is going to be fun. We'll sit back and watch. We got about a half a lap to eh, maybe three quarters of a lap to go still before we get to the start finish line and go green. And we're watching the field go by right now, taking a look as they're going to cross right by our drone camera. We saw that difference in elevation. That's something we talked about before the race got going. This track profile, you've got a huge difference in terms of the highs and lows of this circuit, and it helps with preserving that momentum. If you look around this circuit, and we mentioned the shape of it, Road Atlanta, very much all about the flow and the speed that you can continue to build up. We'll see that long straighter rate right now highlighted in the center of your screen, but it's all about the sweeping curves, the back and forth, those lefts and rights. You gotta understand how to take them correctly here, and with not a lot of room overall, a road course again, so there's very minimal room for error and a lot of high speed sections here so not as technical as previous circuits on the schedule you got to make sure you understand how to keep that speed because we're definitely going to see drivers going over 170 miles an hour especially down the long straight it's going to be all about that management each and every lap Miranda at the top of the board going to be starting on reds Julian Altena you're going to see on the primaries right beside him but the front row's got a different strategy, and that's going to come and play all night long. Expecting a two-stop strategy, differences in tire compound from the beginning of this race to the end, and it'll be Miranda in control as the green flag waves in a row Atlanta. On the way from Georgia, Miranda gets the lead. Rest of field going to be trailing back with Pedro Bell jumping immediately into second. Oh, we got a car off at the top of the hill. Looks like Seb Alexander. He's back underway. First Maybe five a through. Of a jumble there. Yeah, first five or through five.
And letting these drivers get on the way. Looks like most drivers get out without any trouble. Dan Ench is now going to be about 10 seconds back of your leader. Already big spread to kick this one off. But looks like the front runners get away nicely. Bruno Miranda to take the lead over Pedro by Bell. They're side by side further back. You're going to see Cedric Holmboom getting yep. very close here to Julian Altena. And this is the He's fight for third pass. already. He's on push to pass. Couldn't outbreak him. Now when you're on push to pass, everything happens a little bit more fast faster than normal so sometimes you do miss your braking zone but he's on side by side he's going to have the position coming through 12 and gets the position julian did not want that but uh, there will be a trade-off at point at some point when those guys on the alternate tires are going to come back to the guys on the prime tire so julian's just going to try to stick with them maybe as uh, comp uh uh, get him on a mistake. And we got you know, big trouble back in the field. Yeah. Dallas, Lover, and Hale, they're destroyed. And we got our first big incident here at the road course this season. We got to take a look back here. You can see shredded the front end. I think multiple drivers are heading down to pit road right now. Yeah, Gallas and Hale are on pit road right now. Mc, uh, Gary uh, Lover is uh, still going. Um, and he's missing the uh, right front wing. Uh, so he's a one wing angel right now. He's going to want to stop and. Uh, get that replaced might as well top off the tanks and uh, throw on a new set of tires at this point so he's going to be on a different strategy strategy now is to just survive coming down the front straightaway galas lovern and jordan hale made contact it was a side-by-side -side battle out of the exit of the final turn which gave way to three drivers getting involved two on pit road already as we send it back to your live feed here's bruno miranda still leading and at four tenths of a second back to pedro by bell then cedric Holmboom, who's going to be in third taking it from julian as we mentioned an early pass and only three now four drivers have used the push to pass once at all, and you have to look back to Finian and Dakuna for the next driver who took it once, and then Sebastian Kindra and Jonathan Diggs both using it once apiece, 12th and 13th respectively. So most drivers laying off of the push to pass right now. Patrick Zilvazzi going to be fifth, and Craig Forsythe is going to be sixth. Overall, the field is spread out big time already. Gary Lovren yep. is about 36 seconds back, and now on pit road. Then Dan Andrews, 14th, is 21 seconds back, and and only in the first two and a half laps. Yeah, you gotta settle in. Just um, limit the mistakes early on. Get yourself into uh, a gap. Start hitting your marks. Get yourself into a uh, rhythm. Uh, heart rates are always high at the start of these races. Just one ding can uh, put you in the wall and really end your day early. Everyone just kind of wants to survive the first couple laps, get these temperatures up or tires up the temp. Uh, Temperature-wise, 67 degrees ambient, 7 degrees track temperature, 70 degrees track temperature. Oh, baby, by Bell at the top of the hill, off. So he's going to lose some, uh, lose some ground to Miranda as uh, the as the Brazilian Storm uh, manages to uh, come through that portion un uh, really mistake-free and capitalizing, putting down more distance between itself and by Bell. 2.1 seconds is now that gap. A close call there for by Bell, but he was charging beforehand, so this is going to be a huge, huge moment early in the race. Pedro Bybel fades back about a second and a half compared to where he was previously. In his own world right now when it comes to being in second, though, so no jeopardy being caught in this battle between Cedric, Julian, and maybe a bit of Patrick Zovazzi yeah, as well. A good battle right here, yeah. Julian getting good close. Oh, so, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, so I think... Cedric should be faster based upon having those tires. However, I think, really, if Julian could get around them, Julian might pull away. And he's on the harder of the two compounds. Now, Julian seems to be one of the better drivers at this circuit, especially the previous qualifying record came through as last season's winner. Now we're riding on board with the number 11 once again. The sunlight beaming down on these drivers. We were told it's going to be a sunset race. It might end just before the sun fully sets. So keep an eye out for the daylight here because we're going to be losing it as the race goes on. And that's going to be a big deal. I don't think we're going to end up pitch black, but it's going to become a bit more challenging for these drivers as the race goes on. Maybe a bit more grip, less warmth on the track, but it's going to be sunset tonight, well, the condition today. Well, if they should go into the twilight, they do have portions of the track that are lit, and we're coming up to one right now, and we'll take a look at it here for watching this battle with Julian. Coming down the hill into that chicane, they'll have a, a portable generator with light stands there uh, that will shine on that corner, and uh, we had a race uh, on Race First for the Formula Indy Series that ran here, and 
Um, one thing or another, one thing led to another, unfortunately. And I think when the race was created, the session was created, uh, they didn't realize they were on an accelerated time clock and the race actually ended uh, under dark in IndyCar. Now, IndyCars don't have lights, so they got that tail light on them. And that doesn't indicate braking. It just comes on during caution periods uh, or any four course yellows. So uh, any light that, that was able to be used uh, were uh, performed by those uh, portable light stands that you see in some of the corners. There's one right there uh, on the exit of five uh, going down a little straight into six. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if uh, accelerated time frame here uh, gets us into the hours where we actually see those lights come on and play a factor. Now, even if that were to be the case, it's a pretty fair temperature overall. Partly cloudy skies at about 67 Fahrenheit, and the track temp is 72. So the sunlight not making much of a difference to conditions. I don't Ooh, think Julie's that's going to be a huge deal. The, oh, Julian, cutting the grass through turn nine. There's a little kink on that backstretch, and uh, he just forces the uh, issue on Cedric. Cedric's like, okay, go right ahead. I think Cedric actually uh, probably a little surprised, lost momentum, because I think Silvazzi's going to get him now through 12. And so put two guys with the alter or with the prime tire uh, up into the order now. That's what they want. That's what they want to see. That's what they want to do. They want to, because after a while, these alternate tires are, are, are not going to be nearly as effective. Julian almost in the grass there at the top of the hill. Again, that's a blind corner. It's really tough to see. If we do any other car shot, in car shots up there, you can clearly see it. But just you just got to know it's there. It's kind of almost like turn. Uh, I guess it would be six at. Uh, uh, Road America, uphill, under a bridge. You've got to kind of know it's there. You can't see the apex. Same thing here. Up the hill, blind turn. Got to know the apex there. Trust the pavement, trust the car. Already lap machines in the way of Bruno Miranda. He's going to get right by one. That was Gary Lovern, who still got that damage from the previous incident. Doesn't look to be anything major cosmetically. We saw how he got caught up in it, and he's continued to lose more and more pace as the race has gone on. One lap down right now. Only one retiree in Jordan Hale, and Hugo Gala is still going to be on pit road. Pedro by Bell's coming up right now on the another VOR driver. They both got the same paint scheme but different colors and Julian Altena now has a train of about five following and you'll see Alaric yeah. Vandenboss in the 72 then Craig Forsyth, Zed Holmblum and Patrick Zovazzi making up this entire battle here. Forsyth getting closer to the Cedric now. So I told you I, th I thought Julian would pull away and, and I think he is slowly pulling away. I think uh, Cedric, no fault of his own. Everyone has a pace they want to subscribe to. If he has a pace they want to subscribe to for fuel and, and tire conservation, just run your pace. You run your race. Sometimes you don't have to pass a single car in a race, and you can get a good result just by, if you have a good strategy, you run your race, hit your marks, do everything that you uh, prescribe yourself to. You could, you could perform a good race. So I'm not worried about the uh, Holblum falling back. I just figured that he was holding up Julian, and I was right. Julian is kind of pulling away. So is Silvazzi. Uh, I do uh, want to talk about uh, the point situation. Um, Forsyth is your, still your points leader, but uh, right now Miranda's moved to uh, P2 in the point standings. Uh, he's only uh, 20, 18 points back. So uh, Miranda wants to capitalize on a good, good weekend here. And uh, while Forsyth looked like he might be on his way, and still early, I don't want to jinx him anything, to a... Uh, uh, top 10 finish here um, right now Miranda is cutting into that lead uh, just by virtue of kind of running away at this thing and and Craig kind of stuck back in the uh, mid middle portion of the top 10. Now we're taking a look at that point standing battle as you mentioned here on the viewer's screen and it's been very close all throughout the season at least so far. I think it's going to continue to develop here with these road courses particularly and Bruno Miranda looking very good as you mentioned. It's a major opportunity for he and Julian Altena to perhaps jump up and leapfrog Craig Forsyth who's been the dominant man to this point. In terms of the team battle it's Altena Autosport with the advantage over Team 40 Racewear and I think 40 Racewear really carried hard because they've got one driver represent them entirely and that is Craig Forsyth. 184 points. He makes up all of them coming into the night's race and he is still within the battle for the team championship despite being the one-man show at the top of the board. Well, right now he just got by Cedric Holmblum. That's going to be for fifth and he's on his way to maybe chase down Patrick Zovazzi just a few tenths of a second ahead. Craig fresh off a win, not much more than. Oh, Craig uh, actually in the grass going to give Olbum a run on him here. Through, hey, pull him off, pull him off. And we're going through the S's. Sorry, the Holbum recovered. He did, got close there. But the Craig fresh off a victory, 
in the uh, iRacing uh, IndyCar Series Open uh, series this year. I, I say I see series twice. They call it the IndyCar Series Open, and it's just weird to kind of end it just by saying that. I want to say the IndyCar Open Series makes more sense, but iRacing has weird names of naming, way, weird, weird ways of naming this stuff. But he's fresh off a win just no more than an hour or so ago, two hours ago, at Nashville. Julian fresh off a podium from that race as well. So those two guys practice already today. And, and uh, like I said, we talked about this before. The more rep time you get on these behind these cars, it doesn't matter if it's on an oval or a road course, the better you are. And so they already got 115 laps under them at uh, a very tricky Nashville Super Speedway in these cars. And, and then they're here back, back down to uh, Road Atlanta on the road course and uh, are capitalizing kind of on that uh, uh, positive momentum they established about, you know, just in their last race. And right now they're running third and fifth respectively. Looks like Julian Alton are going to be running the better of those two. And Patrick Zobazzi staying close as Fane Dakuna's got trouble and just spun around in the Sim TV number 94. Dakuna does not make contact with anyone else. Luckily keeps going here. And now Sebastian Kinder is going to be looking for a spot. But it looks like right now Finian going to be able to defend and keep the number 97 at bay. Dakuna's going to lose about seven seconds in that one little mistake. Looks like no major damage, so Finian will keep on going, but trouble starting to arise for drivers more and more. Jakuna gave me another example. We saw how Cedric Holmboom got involved there with Craig Forsyth, and is already getting close again to maybe making a pass. In the last few laps, yeah. we've seen Holmboom use it only once in terms of push to pass, so had nine uses remaining, and got right back up to Craig here. The battle's not done by any means, and it looks like quick to recover in that number 10. Yeah, he's, but he's thrashing those tires. Uh, he really is thrashing those tires to keep up with them. So um, uh, Craig just really buying uh, his time right now. Uh, but uh, Indy cars, like I said, never raced here in real life. Uh, the closest was an Indy Lights race here uh, way back when. I could look up some results for folks. But uh, this used to be owned by uh, a family well-known in the IndyCar community. Uh, the Winnington family, and if you're familiar with the Winnington brothers, uh, Don, Bill, and Dale, they're the only three-brother combination ever to qualify for the Indy 500. Now, we've had multiple Andrettis. We've had Jeff, John, uh, Michael, and Mario, uh, but not all were uh, brothers there. John was uh, a cousin, so only uh, Jeff and uh, uh, Michael were brothers, so... We've never had three in the Indy 500 at the same time. Even the Unsers. I don't think we had all three Unsers at the same time. I believe the oldest Unser died a year before uh, Al actually got there. But uh, they weren't the best guys. Uh, I think Dale only made the 500 once, and he crashed out in that early uh, Coogan incident uh, coming to the green flag in the 82 500. Uh, but uh, Bill and Don always had a way of showing up to... Uh, the Indianapolis 500 and the IndyCar series or back then, the kart series um, with the latest and greatest equipment. And they're all like, how do these guys possibly afford these things? Well, uh, back in the early uh, 1980s, late 70s, a bit of a scandal in the IMSA ranks. Uh, in fact, uh, IMSA, they, they jokingly said IMSA stood for the International Marijuana Smuggling Association because the Whittington brothers Along with Randy Lazier, which I believe that might be a video on Netflix. I think it is that you can watch about I Randy think it Lazier. Is. Yeah, I know which one you're talking and, about. And, and and John Paul Senior and John Paul Junior were all tied up uh, in federal charges of a marijuana smuggling. So legend has it, and when we get a good shot here of the back straightaway, that people say the back straightaway is long enough and straight enough for a single engine aircraft to land there, because the legend says. That back in the day, that the uh, Whittingtons would make the ra the racetrack available for smugglers to land their planes on the backstretch to offload their uh, smuggling load, and to, then to fly back to Central or South America or wherever they were smuggling uh, said things from. But unfortunately, we never saw this enacted uh, during Narcos. That would have been fun. Uh, but if you want to learn more about that era, uh, definitely check out that the uh, Netflix. Uh, documentary, and that's the, the Winnington brothers, and that's how they kind of always was able to uh, fund themselves with the latest and greatest equipment and no sponsorship on the side whatsoever. And that's kind of the funny thing about them. 
Uh, but they, they really, and, and on top of that, they really earned their reputation in uh, sports car racing and uh, uh, in aviation. But uh, they uh, earned the uh, the reputation of uh, smuggling, though. Uh, that's been kind of proven in the federal courts. And uh, that's kind of how they got their money. And then uh, they got the racetrack taken away from them, and it was uh, held in receivership for someone else to buy. Uh, but that is the legend that airplanes landed on the backstretch to unload their smuggling marijuana. I tell you this much, we were going down that I bet you didn't know that. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, Go if ahead. we look at it again, and I know the drivers are coming right back up on it, we'll see how, uh, how wide that back straightaway really is. The longest and quickest section of the entire track. Looks like Bruno Moran has already made his way there. He's going at about 180 right now as you ride on board with Patrick Zilvazzi running right behind Julian Altina. This battle has been brewing for a while here as Zilvazzi gets up to about 183 before hitting the braking zone and going for that switch back and moves with flicks of the wrist to stay right there within of course, closing distance of Julian Altina. About a half a second is still the gap between these two who are fighting for the third. Now, we're coming up this time through to lap number 17 when Bruno Miranda gets back to the start-finish line. And that means our pit window is going to be open for the first time all race long. We're coming up on our pit cycle. So we are expecting two stops. And the first one could be very soon for a majority of these drivers. Dan Ench, Gary Lovern, they're one lap down. Gary's gone down to pit road once, uh, 12 lap stint for him and whereas Dan Ench is just one lap down it looks to be on pace there lap machines few and far between we might see one though and Jonathan Diggs coming right up there here's the number four for Kingsman Racing and it looks like John having a little more trouble here as Bruno Miranda is coming very close before this pit cycle comes into fruition it might be another driver put one lap down but we'll see I think for Bruno right now what's on the mind for him is the compound swap mandatory today and those two Two tire compounds, you have to switch them. If you started on the primaries, eventually you have to go on to the alternates. If you're on the alternates, eventually you got to go down to the primaries for at least one run. Yep, exactly. Miranda uh, getting around Diggs there. Diggs uh, ducked the car out of the way on the main straight and uh, allowed uh, Miranda to pass on by. I was thinking if Miranda got stuck behind him uh, with the window open now, if he was still stuck behind him coming to pit road or at least the pit road entrance road this time by maybe duck in and use this opportunity for your pit stop but you mentioned it the window is wide open 17 to 19 is kind of when we're expecting things to happen and then another 17 to 19 after that so you just round up to 20 so uh lap 40 is when uh, we expect everyone for the last stop and that last 10 laps are probably when we'll see light tanks red tires and purple laps and two drivers just made it down to pit road for the first time. Dakuna and Alaric Vandenbus, respectively. Now Finian makes it in immediately thereafter. And you'll see on a pit road, we're now getting our cycle into motion. 17 laps in exactly for those two drivers. And they're going to already get down to pit road. As Pedro by Bell is getting held up here. And it looks like he finds himself very close to Julian Altina. Yep. As they both make it in, so does Miranda. Miranda. Leaders are going Leaders through. Leaders are all in, yep. And then Silvazzi in. Forsyth in, uh, Holbloom uh, going to come in. So I think everybody is going to take the early opportunity to uh, hit pit road. I don't think anyone's going to go long, and that might not be a bad idea. I think the undercut's going to be powerful here. Fresh tires. Yeah, Strauss going in. Strauss driving for a new team this week. And he will drop in, as you mentioned, new team right now for Matthias Strauss. He's going to be working with the Ryder Engineering Esports. We mentioned previously they came on to work with us for our Phoenix doubleheader. They were looking for drivers. It looks like they've got one in Matthias Strauss. He's ran solidly so far, and he makes his move in. There's Sebastian Kinder. There's John Christensen. And it looks like for the majority of the field, already one pit stop. We're only waiting now on Jonathan Diggs and Dan Ench, and they're both coming up on the pit road entry here so I think everyone comes in this one lap oh, everyone reset uh, we'll give you an idea what people got for tires and everything got to maybe a lap or so got to bring these tires every single tire up to temperature it's always a little hairy when you're at, apply full full throttle to a set of a uh, car with a set of uh, new tires on it. They used to have warmers back at IndyCar back in the day. In fact, surprise, surprise, Team Penske was the one that kind of innovated it and brought it in. Those are banned in IndyCar racing. So no tire warmers are allowed in IndyCar racing, unlike what you see at uh, Formula One. 
Well, it looks like right now, Bruno Miranda already back up to speed. That time through was a 133.346, which accounts, of course, for 31 seconds in the box overall for yep. the number 78. 31 seconds in the pit lane, rather. 9.1 seconds yep. in the box in particular. The fastest driver through pit road would have been Pedro Libel. He was fastest through the box, but not through pit lane. These tenths of a second, they do matter. And I think one driver who makes some gains on it right now is Julian Altona getting right back up to buy Bell. Patrick Zovazzi with only 31.1 in pit lane. The quickest, the tied for quickest of any one driver. So Zovazzi, that's exactly what this crew needed to stay with the battle for second. As Altona and by Bell are going to chase each other down the long straight here and keep each other close. As you can see, Julian very, very near that number 88. And Julian switched compounds. So Julian uh, made the necessary hay on those uh, harder tires. And he's going to be rewarded with a very fast car now and a closer gap, closer gap to his teammate by Bell on those red tires. So that uh, strategy is kind of paying off. Now, he desperately needs to get around him. He cannot stay back there forever. He's got to get around him because Julian... Uh, he could go back to another set of red, or he could finish up with another set of uh, climbs if he wants to. i got to think that uh, if everyone's next stop is around 40-ish, and it's only about 10 laps or so go to the end, I would imagine everyone made their tire switch on their first uh, pit stop. And uh, either if, if they went from black to red, they're probably going to continue with red. If they went from red to black, they're going to finish with red. That's probably what's going to happen here. And right now we're watching as Julian on the push to pass. You'll see push how the pass, digital dashboard pass. is lit up green. Yep. Yep. Coming through to so the inside. The it looks like a clear pass. Wow. Good pass. Good pass. That is a uh, rule. Race, racing with your teammate. Rule one is don't wreck your teammate. Rule two is always refer back to rule one. That's how important that rule is. And uh, two teammates racing together right there. I'm sure they're in a voice channel to like, plan that one. And, uh, and just a little crack of the throttle by uh, Pedro allows Julian on by. So Julian now can uh, set an attack for Bruno if he can run Bruno down. He's got four and a half seconds to do it. Now Bruno, uh, he uh, decided to go uh, with the prime tire. So in the theory right now, he should be a little bit slower than Julian. In fact, last time by, um, he actually was faster. But I think Julian was racing Pedro that time by. Um, let's see, uh, Miranda 105.9. Actually, Julian, yeah, was faster by about a half a second, 105.4. Purple lap right now is by Bell with the 105.2. Not sure when he set that. I think it was sometime during the first stint. But uh, 105.2 is the purple lap. We might see that fall in the third stint when everyone's on light tanks and red tires. Uh, that's probably when the car is most maximized to increase that time. Altona pulling away just slightly over Pedro by Bell, but one driver who's gaining big is Patrick Zovazzi. 105.5 that time by was the fastest of any driver on the circuit, and it looks like he's still the quickest here with that red alternate yep. compound. So Zovazzi making big time up right now, and even though six yep. seconds out from the leader, looks to be several tenths of a second quicker than anyone ahead. Keep an eye out for Zovazzi making a move perhaps in the podium very soon. Yeah, last five laps, he's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Last five lap average, 106 lap for Miranda. Julian the 105.8, which is just uh, a little bit faster than uh, Patrick's last five laps average, 105.825. Julian the 105.804. So they're about on the same pace. That's just the five lap average. Ten lap average, uh, he is faster. They're almost dead heat, uh, Julian and Salazi. Uh 106 flat for the last ten laps. And Bybell going to have a bit of a tire lock up there. Keeps it straight and keeps it all together in the middle of two very quick drivers right now. So Bybell is sort of feeling that pressure as these guys are continuing to race each other closer than any other group in the field. Pedro Bybell is going to get very loose once again and goes into the yep. lawn. He's going to try to get it out of the grass quickly. That mows it up just a bit and loses a spot that very is quickly. So easy to do. That is so easy to do there. And he's... He, what, he, what he's done is he screwed up his timing. He's at the top of the hill, and he's kind of searching back for the racetrack to get his timing back. So a little uh, mental mistake there uh, leading to another mental mistake, and uh, that cost him uh, a solid, uh, well, 
I think I think Savazzi already had the position, if not Savazzi got the position, but and on top of that, a ton of track position that he just lost. But still, top four. He's in P4. Craig Forsyth uh, now reeling him in. Craig back uh, about two seconds from that battle right there. So Forsyth yeah. might have a chance to perhaps pull together because by Bell, not only the rhythm there, but you might have to think about it as in destroying the equipment at the same time. Not going to be easy to get back on the primary compound after shredding the tire and going right through the grass like that. And we saw he was smoking up the tire previously. Looked like a one-time thing and then it happened again and it really got extreme there. So by Bell's going to be particularly slower through these next 10, 15-ish laps as he recovers in this stint. Forsyth is still about six seconds away. Keep that in mind, though. Yeah. However, Bidel yeah. lost four seconds on that last lap. He's pulling it together right now. I think he's going to be still a few seconds slower than anything he was doing previously. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understated, uh, uh, or actually overstated the gap from uh, Forsyth to uh, Bidel, but I thought it was like two seconds, but it was more than the, in the five, six-second neighborhood right now. So... Uh, 2450, we're at the halfway point, and uh, leaders Miranda, he's pretty much led them all. I don't think there, there might have been a different leader during the uh, pit stop swap, uh, but we'll see uh, if he can lead all of them here. So right now, uh, he started from the pole, uh, so he has one crown of the triple or the uh, grand slam done. If he can win the race, lead all the laps and get the purple lap, he'll get all crowns to the Grand Slam. And that's a rare, pretty rare thing to do. That's a very hard thing to do. You see it happen in Formula One sometimes with the way that the, their races are developed, but you don't see it in other forms of racing that often. But if you can pull it off, it just that's a hell of a day. It's almost like a, a perfect quarterback rating uh, in, in the NFL. Well, right now, the fastest lap is going to go to Pedro by Bell with a 105.211. So yep. it doesn't have that quick lap just yet, but that can always change. So I don't expect that to be the biggest, most important factor right now to how Moran is taken to the track. Still has led every lap so far as we're coming up on the halfway point this time by. It's been dominant so far. Julian Altena going to be there about five seconds back. Zilvazi was gaining, but I think he got shook up a bit as well as a result of Pedro by Bell wiggling out of control erratically right by him. So unfortunately, Zilvazi is going to have to drop back, and we've slowly but surely seen a bit less out of this battle as of recent. Zilvazi is still about a tenth of a second quicker each time by, but nothing that's really showing a huge gain as we saw previously. So as Miranda goes by the stripe, we're halfway down, and we've got half way to go. Miranda, you're still leader with five seconds to the gap to second. Bruno Miranda, Julian Altena, and Patrick Zovazzi, first, second, third. Then you look right back down at Pe uh, Pedro by Bell, right now putting it all together. Last time by was a 106.097, so despite the hiccup, still quick and still faster than Craig Forsythe. So doing very well in putting it all together, but you got to understand he's driving it as hard as he can right now, perhaps trying to put something together for the later stage of this race. Of all the drivers in the field right now, he's one of only two that has not used to push to pass once so if anything were to happen up ahead maybe there's an opportunity for him to return to the battle with Zovazi and Altona given the fact he's got more push passes than anyone on the lead lap and he's still right there with Gary Lovern 10 push passes for each of them as it stands it's still going to be very close between the drivers who are battling in the mid-pack though we're starting to see a battle come together between Matthias Strauss and Sebastian Kinder in addition you're also seeing Alaric Vandenboss in the mix so now we're starting to see the mid-pack get closer and closer again as you see him come through the final section of the circuit down to lap number 27 for these drivers who are about 30 seconds away from your leader. And we're just kind of settling in now. The good of the tires are kind of worn off. Uh, the guys on the alternate uh, are, are kind of hanging on now. They're about nine laps into the stint, ten laps into the stint. Guys on the prime tires, everything's coming in for them. Uh, they're 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 getting more and more happy. And 
putting it together nicely here in this longer stint. Second stint, of course, for these drivers, a lot of them, they made the change on compound, as you mentioned, from primaries to alternate and vice versa. So a lot of these drivers getting used to something a bit different from their previous strategy calls. And for the most part, we haven't seen many major issues come from it. And we're looking right now, Matthias Strauss gaining big time on Alaric Vandenbos. We'll look on board right now with the number eight if we can, but he's having some internet troubles too. So we'll take a look from the back bumper of the number 72. Right now in seventh, but that time by lost. We can't even figure out how much in particular, but it looks to be about a loss of a tenth of a second each and every time by, if not more. The gap between these two drivers is now two tenths of a second. And as we mentioned, it's about two tenths every lap right now being lost for Alaric. As you can see, Matthias Strauss slowly but surely creeping up into the frame and definitely pushing hard through this flowing portion of the circuit. The first sector, he seems to be very quick in and comes to his own in the last one as well. Yeah, down the hill, down the slalom. Always fun. In fact, uh, one of the uh, more famous uh, IndyCar drivers in history uh, got his start as a, a professional downhill skier. That's Dick Simon. I don't know if that name rings a bell. He used to be a longtime driver and a longtime uh, team owner. Um, right, uh, right, he, he quit uh, owning teams right about the time of the split. And I think he sold most, most of his staff to uh, Andy Evans in Scandia there in 96. And he's uh, pretty much uh, in retirement now. Um, funny thing is, is uh, depending on who you want to believe and what rumor says, uh, he has been accused of being the legendary D.B. Cooper uh, for stealing that money in that 1972-ish hijacking in the Northwest. Uh, they, the, the, actually, he was being investigated by the FBI as being a possible um, D.B. Cooper uh, character. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. Now that <laughs> never knew of. I mean, how did they put that connection together? Is there any like reasoning that they got through to make that happen? Uh, well, um, he had experience jumping out of airplanes. He had experience uh, camping uh, as a survivalist, I guess, camping out in uh, uh, the wilderness. I guess he's from that area. Uh, and uh, uh, things added up. And the, the, he, he, fed, he checked certain boxes for the FBI. That was enough for them to actually have a conversation with him. But uh, there is a video uh, somewhere... Um, out there uh, on YouTube where he actually talks about the FBI coming and talking to him about being uh, a possible uh, alias for uh, D.B. Cooper. Well, how about that? Right now, the battles are getting a bit closer again. Pedro by Bell, who is several seconds out from Patrick Zovazzi, is now only half a second away. So, by Bell has been clearly the quickest driver in the mix, even still, and is still putting down 105 times as opposed to everyone else ahead of him being in the 106s. Right now, on the push to pass, it's going to be by Bell coming through quick. Swiftly goes up high. Going to take it to the top side here, and now it's time for the double switchback. Oh, right. Taking it in. Clearly ahead by the breaking zone, and Pedro by Bell is up to third. We didn't expect that so quickly. Already making moves, and actually that's his first push I... to pass use all race long. Yeah, and I, he, he, I think Patrick kind of let off to kind of let him go. Um, I think those red tires have had it, really. Um, we're in that point, uh, we're 13 laps into a stint. I mean, we're four laps away from another pit stop, and we were, we we're just talking about these guys just stopping. That was uh, almost 17 laps ago, guys. So we're, we're now approaching that uh, second 17-lap stint, into that se second 17-lap stint. So we're going to see how these things pan out here. But uh, we're getting really close to uh, uh, that, like I said, it's going to be right around that 10-to-go window where we see them dive in. And we're getting very, very close. 13 lap stint for most of these drivers. And Zovazzi's going to slide. As you saw him drifting out of the corner there, he had trouble right now for Zovazzi and the Reds. We're looking on board to another battle involving Matthias Strauss and Alaric Vandenbosch. These two drivers are now within four tenths of a second of each other. And that's the closest they've been all throughout this race. Coming around this time through, Matthias Strauss is getting closer yep. and closer yeah, yep. here. Good, and he's on the Reds as well. Corner. Yeah, and he's going to be on push to pass if he's not already on down this straight right here. Yeah, he is. He's on push to pass. Saw the chance. Going to get some momentum. Here's his opportunity in the draft. Closing in. He's going to send it in there. 
Wow, I'll break them. Nice pass. Great job. At the last set and taking it there, what a move that was to dive in deep and luckily no contact between the both of them. Matthias Strauss gets out of it and will take position number seven. Big move right there on debut for a new team and showing that this rider engineering number eight's got something on of course to unveil for any driver in his past. Strauss makes the move, gonna jump him up to seventh. Meanwhile, we're seeing Pedro Bibel come closer and closer to the second spot, and this could be a fight for the runner-up position between Julian and Pedro. All of a sudden, close again, but you see the tire locks are coming back into play. Maybe Bibel's uh, outlasting his welcome here without Hardy's pushing. That was a great pass, on Strauss. So full, full send. You gotta, you gotta also hope that the guy that you're racing with is uh, willing to uh, accept that full send and uh, concede a little bit. Otherwise, at the exit of that corner, you're gonna both be probably riding on top of one another. But uh, Miranda now with uh, Christensen lap traffic in front of him. Christensen can hold him up a little bit for his teammate. Julian is his teammate. Now, uh, in in real world IndyCar. Team orders are supposedly not allowed. They're supposedly not allowed in F1, and they're definitely not allowed in NASCAR. However, how this game works, and there's no way to manage that, uh, team orders happen in uh, private uh, voice channels somewhere. And uh, there have been times where I've been on a race course with my teammates, and they're like, uh, drive the accelerator a little bit for the guy. Slow down the guy behind you so we can catch up. Uh, stuff like that happens. And by Bell quickly makes it past his teammate and Julian Altona. It's now going to be Pedro up to second. And it looks like the primary is doing well yep. for by Bell uh, up to second place over. here. Yep. And just before the pit cycle. Yeah, this is the, the trade over point where the where the prime tires come into most effectiveness over the uh, the alternate tires, the red sidewall tires. Those are pretty well spent for these guys. So they're like, OK, I'm ready to make my pit stop. But. You can't pit too early. You got to make sure that you uh, get into that window. Otherwise, you don't want to have to uh, run it in, in, you know, fuel map five or fuel map eight for a couple of laps just to save enough uh, fuel to finish this race. You want to get to that final window so you have enough. Maybe add a little bit more so you can use your push to passes. Because pushing to pass, you know, that does use more fuel. A lot of people don't realize that, but it does. And speaking of uh, pit cycle, we got now Vandenbosch down and in. In addition, it's going to be calling through Pedro by Bell, Julian Altona. They're going to be putting the signals out. Finian de Kuna makes it in at the same time. Pit road going to be busy once again. Bruno Miranda's call is to stay out. And it looks like right now for by Bell, he'll be launching in. in. So we got a bit of a Julian divide in. pit strategy. Yeah, and this is, a, I'm sure, a team call. When you got two team cars coming in, that's what they're talking. They're, they're going to try to uh, get, do the overcut here where they're going to or get in, get new tires, and then push like heck on this next lap to close the gap and then hope that Miranda has a slow spot and then they'll have the, uh, the overcut here. So we'll see. Hitting their uh, slow pit road speed. Slow, slow, slow. Hitting pit road. By Bell down. He's got the prime alternate tires on. Julian again with the alternate tires. So there's going to be Push, push, push for these guys. And if you notice, Bruno Miranda, probably don't notice already, but I can see right now in, in my uh, overlay, he has on push to pass. So he's like, okay, I know what they're trying to do. I'm going to push this car as humanly possible on this last lap. So I build up uh, as much of a gap. So when I do make my stop, which he's doing right here, he should pop out in front of Julian and Pedro. We'll see. Pedro and Julian are trying. 31 seconds I don't inside the lane. Yeah. So I think there's a chance here. Yeah. yeah. Pedro wide on corner seven entrance at the exit. That's going to cost him some time. Time's valuable right now. But I think this race is going to be much closer than what we've seen all throughout so far. By Bell is quick, and he went in early here with his team. So Bruno Miranda's got the opportunity to maybe flip the script, but we'll see. Coming around this time through, Cedric Holden is going to be coming through, but it looks like far away enough where Miranda is in clear clear range of only a lap yeah. it's going to be a much much easier opportunity and bruno takes it once again top of the board and the sun's light yep. is almost entirely gone here's a quick track shot of the entire circuit right here and i think we've hit the twilight hours here in road atlanta so we're going to be very close here in terms of sunlight 
I don't think we're going to go after Dark, but we're going to be right there on the bleeding edge. As right now, the Roar Esports number 78 leads by 10 seconds over Julian Altena. Well, if you ask me, nighttime is the right time for IndyCar racing. But uh, this is probably not the right course to have the nighttime racing at right now. And it looks like one driver is having some trouble as we approach tonight is Pedro by Bell, who's dropped back into fourth here. That time by lost a oh, lot. Oh, something in, happened to the was a 143 lap, so he lost something about nine to seconds. Bosch. Something happened to Strauss. Something happened to Vandenbosch and Strauss. They're both in pit road. They're missing front wing elements. We're going to take a look back and find out because these two drivers, we just mentioned Strauss was battling, and you can see they are caught up in the trees. So we're going to take it back 20 more seconds and find out what really caused this incident. Matthias Strauss, Dan Ench, and Jonathan Diggs are all going to be on pit road, and Strauss looks like he went around alone, and the front wing destroyed there. He goes back on the track and gets brutally taken right up and over. Uh, wow. Van right. Bosch involved, so Jonathan Diggs too. That that my so who who was the who was the originator of that incident? So it looked like it was Strauss who ran around first, and it was Jonathan Diggs right. coming in as well as um when it came to that where you can see he comes in first and flying right over. It was Vandenbosch who went right over the both of them. So it's a very very nasty hit there. We're gonna take one more replay and watch from Vandenbosch's perspective because the 72 launched up and on top of Jonathan Diggs and flew right over. The number eight of Matthias Strauss. So looks like, yeah, Strauss comes right back on the track and Vandenbosch goes up in the air for about 100 feet and slides to a stop. And it's a, it's a track blocker for sure. Luckily, all three drivers come down to pit road, but that's not the way they want to end oh. their race there. That's a heartbreaker yeah, for the three of them. Nothing he could have done about that. Uh, I, at first, I thought it might have been an unsafe rejoin, but I watched the replay from my point of view, and he just kind of skid back out on the track. The car um, that was next in line was on the brakes, and then the car behind him, which would have been Vandenbosch, didn't see the brakes in time, and then he uh, catapulted himself over the top. Uh, unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Uh, I was going to think it was better than an unsafe rejoin, but uh, no, that, I was just, uh, he rolled back into the center of traffic, and you just got to keep your eye out on that. And it's tough. These cars are moving. General rule of thumb is a racetrack a second, or excuse me, a, a football field a second. So, um, that, and, and many times, it's a, not a lot of times to react, but uh, Back out in action, Miranda. The the Brazilian storm continues to lead, and Julian's trying to uh, run him down. But I don't think it's going to be. I don't think he's going to have time. Julian just went purple. One hundred five flat. Wow, what a lap that was. Miranda also beat his best with a 105-142, but I think that's the dying gasp from Altena in terms of trying to catch up because that's the fastest lap we've seen in this race, as you mentioned, and that would really take away the Grand Slam opportunity for Bruno Miranda. Maybe Miranda's got a little more under. Of course, on a younger set of tire, it's possible, but Alton is going to set a statement lap regardless. 105.047, and that's going to be a clear and away new race lap record for the driver, the number 11. Alton going to set another here in Road Atlanta. So I almost set in an official race, I almost set the Grand Slam on an oval. That's really hard to do. I got the pole, won the race, led all the laps, but I didn't have the purple lap. And the only reason I never had the purple lap, it was a drafting racetrack, and I was out in front the entire time and never had anyone to draft with. But I'm sure if I had someone to draft with, I would have had that purple lap. But I had three quarters of the Grand Slam on an oval, and that's, that's hard to do as well. Uh, because certainly uh, uh, most times there's, a, there's an overlap in the pit strategy on an oval. Um, and the ovals are short enough that you're going to have a new leader. Not always the case in road courses. Sometimes in road courses, the overlap doesn't happen because of the distance. And um, right now, Miranda is uh, definitely uh, sending out a statement right now that this championship uh, could be his as uh, we still got a long way to go. And next week, we go to an oval, uh, which is Milwaukee. And uh, that's going to be interesting uh, because it's been, we've been on a couple weeks on the uh, road courses. And Milwaukee is a tough oval. But I know one person that races really well at Milwaukee, and that's the guy certainly currently sitting in second, Julian. I've seen him uh, uh, whip the field a good time, a number of times in, at Milwaukee. So I think Julian just want to hang tough here.
finish second, get his points, and uh, go on the next week to an oval that I know he excels at. And as it stands, Julian Alton are going to be third in the championship standing. So big opportunity here running ahead of Craig Forsythe. Miranda looking to take the points lead when all is said and done tonight. You look at the point standings one more time on the screen here on FTN. It's going to be a very close championship battle from this point onward. I think the season's only going to get more intense as it progresses here with Forsythe. He's still running solid, but he's not up there fighting directly with Bruno Miranda. Jonathan Diggs is going to go around again as Jonathan gets back on the track. He's going to be inside the gravel here. He gets going once more. Luckily, nobody else involved, but another incident here as we're coming through the final few laps. Yeah. Ten to go, and the sun is almost completely set. We are really close here when it comes to time in the session overall. I mean, when the sunlight goes, if it were to hypothetically, really there's nothing much more you can do with this race. And right now, Bruno Miranda's got control. He's got good visibility right now inside the cockpit. And he's certainly very happy to have nine seconds behind and a clean track in front. Yeah, he's got a next closest car is Diggs, which is 15 seconds down the road from him. So right now, as if the way things go, uh, he should not encounter, ooh, cut over that uh, corner. So he took more of the curve than I expected there. Anyways, uh, which that can damage your under tray, by the way, if you do that. Um, and then I will and, uh, um, impact my heart performance. But uh, Miranda uh, should be able to uh, finish this race without encountering any lap traffic, I don't think. Uh, Diggs is now 13 seconds ahead of him. But we'll see. Nine to go. Altena, Savazzi, Bybel, Forsyth. Forsyth cracked into the top five. He's pretty safely into the top five. Holbrook uh, is behind him by about uh, 20 seconds. So a top five for, uh, I think Craig would take a top five on a road course. I'm sure, I'm sure of it. And certainly a good position to come through with regardless of, of course, field size right now. 17 registered. We got 12 still on the circuit here. And a bit of a bit of more of an, a night of attrition than what we saw in Zandvoort, where overall it's one of these tracks which has a lot more of a varying profile that gives way to some troubles and some struggles for drivers. But most have done a good job of avoiding just that. Sebastian Kinder right now going to be coming up on Cedric Holmboom. This is the battle for the sixth position. And right now Cedric has it. Sebastian Kinder definitely wants it. They're also coming up on a lap machine right now. That is Dan Ench who might play as a bit of a stopgap here in the middle of this fight. Kinder right now as we watch on board is not going to be on the push to pass. Thinks he's a little bit too far out to make it work. The green light has not come on. He's going to get close but not close enough as they come through the braking zone again. Left hander immediately going to be a right hander once more. Kinder's close but still not there just yet in terms of making a real big charge for position eight to go this time by and they're both going to make it by the stripe again separate by only half a second yeah to push the pass situation as uh, miranda just used uh, he had five now he's down to four just used one um i think he's uh, at the position where you can smoke him if you got him type thing because you can't take him with you use him up anyways if he has enough fuel in the tank uh julian is winchester that means he is out he has no more pushes of the button uh, Silvazi has four. Bybell has six. Forsyth on the button now, down the four. Uh, Holbloom has nine still. Uh, he could fire some off here. Kinder has seven. Uh, in fact, maybe he wants to in that battle with Kinder. You can push the pass and push to defend. It doesn't matter which role you're in. Uh, Fiddy and the Big Dakuna is uh, pig uh, is up there at uh, six pushes the button left. Christensen three in the top ten. Uh, Gary Lover and sticking in the top ten again here. Uh, he is down to seven with seven laps to go. And Sebastian Kinder was just on the push to pass, had to back out, was not enough room to make it work, and that's really going to stunt him as he comes out of the final corner this time by. Very close to making a move. He was on the green. He still has a few more opportunities. Six, as well, a matter Holbloom's of fact. Now Holbloom's on it now. So if uh, Holbloom has any overlays when he can tell if someone's on push to pass or possibly he has a spotter, uh, he knows that Kinder was just on it, so he put he pushed the button to uh, put a little extra distance there. Let's see what it shapes up here as they go through the slalom portion down the five, now down into the uh, the guitar neck or whatever you want to call it, the out, you know, the outer portion of the course, what have you. I like these set of turns here. You can kind of nice sweeping. Sometimes you can take it really without uh, take uh, keeping your steering wheel straight. It's kind of a constant turn. Now we're on the straightaway, the landing strip, so to speak. And uh, well, he's got a good run. He's there. A little bit of a twitch for Holbloom there. 
He can't make another move. That was his move. Gets the pass. Nice and clean. We're in the 10A, 10B. So move. Seb Kinder up to six. But this battle's not over yet. Here comes Holbloom. It's going to look underneath coming into 12. Holbloom on the button. And he's going to get the position once more going into one. Doesn't he overdrive one? You're going in the one a lot faster than you normally are right now. So swap the positions back. The fight is still on. I mean, these two drivers going back and forth through the final sector of the circuit. And you saw it there. Sebastian Kinder thinking he had a shot to keep it. Only to get pushed back and forth with that switch back maneuver. And that's going to keep Cedric in line in the sixth spot. So Kinder's going to have another opportunity here. Watching the push to right pass here. game. Ooh. Five push to passes to go here Rise for Kinder. So much deeper than, than Holbrook Kinder. Absolutely does. there, yeah. Five push to passes for Kinder. Seven for Cedric. So for Kinder. It's going to be very risky to be on that offense here, but I think he has to be a bit more aggressive as they're going to come down at six gear. Ooh. He's going in, and he almost Cut got the, the grass. grass there. Yeah, I think he did. I think he did cut the grass there. So, what, what we're seeing at the top of the hill in seven, in turn seven, is that uh, Holbloom's easy in, easy out. And I think we're doing, we're watching Kinder. Seb's going hard in and overdriving the entrance maybe a little bit and not getting a good exit. And that's where Holbloom is uh, keeping the position. I mean, he, if he maintained that distance that he did as he was entering seven down the, down the straight, he, sh he would have been able to pull that pass off. But uh, now there seems to be a bit of, oh, well, the back end goes wide there on five uh, for Holbloom, and he gets a little squirrely. That allows uh, Kinder to catch, back, to catch back up. See how he gets in there? Gets in there now, he's really close. But look at that exit out. So nice and easy in, nice and easy out. Holbloom's managing to keep this position, but I think Kinder's got a run on him, and they're both on the button now. Kinder gonna go right up to the inside yet again. Gonna try to beat him out in the breaking zone, side by side. Nobody's gonna give, oh. but it looks like it's still gonna be an advantage. Cedric, once more, a nice display of defensive driving so far. We thought it was done and done the first time Kinder got around through the push to pass, but ever since then, looks like Cedric's had the advantage in this battle with four laps to go. Night lining is officially on in the session. You might see the shadows being cast occasionally from those portable lights, as you mentioned. While the sun is not fully down, we're seeing a difference in the nighting, night lighting conditions, and it does indicate we've passed the sunset, that's for sure. So now, looks like nighttime's the right time for these two drivers to finish <laughs> their battle off. Three tenths of a second still separates, and they're as close as they can get. Watch them and see them, watch them get in. Really good entry here in the seven. And not a good exit this time for Oldham, although, well, I take that back. Oldham does kind of pull away, but they're both there. Does Seb go back to the button? Seb has four pushes left. Holbrook has five. He's getting there the old-fashioned way, drafting. Now, okay, so Cedric goes to a defensive position to the inside. He made his one move. They're going to dive into 10A, 10B. And, well, Cedric, wow, very impressive. These guys, you know what? I'm, I'm going to nod my cap to, to uh, Seb here, too, because... It's hard in open wheel cars to drive wheel to wheel with somebody and not touch something. That's that's kind of what I often think uh, when people say, "Well, I like they like NASCAR over Indy cars." Like, well, they, you know, NASCAR guys can go bump and rub at each other, and that's fine. Indy car Indy car drivers, you don't want to do that. I, I submit to the jury that it takes more skill not to get it takes more skill to race someone very closely and not rub them than to race someone closely and rub them. That's just my take to the jury. Take that for what you will. Uh, these guys are, are doing a, a good, oh, and he cooks that left front, right front, excuse me, going into the corner, and now we're going to have a push the button down the trap. There he is. He's on the now. Already on Rising. the green. There we go. Yep. All the way down the goes. inside, nearly touching the grass, and that he does side by side. I think this is the big opportunity here. Kinder's got the edge. Cedric's going to remain back. Takes the defensive it position no. once again, though. No, and he cuts across, but he gets it, and I submit to the jury, that's how you do close racing, IndyCar racing. And if you don't find that entertaining, then you're just really not a good race fan.
And now it's going to be Kinder once again on the green. He's only got himself now a total of Both two opportunities to use it again. Two laps to go for these two drivers, whereas Bruno Miranda is out in his own world. We'll check on him right now as he takes the white flag this time by. One lap to go for Bruno Miranda. He's got himself now one more circuit, and he's going to lock it up. He's led every lap in this race. He started from the pole position. He's set to win if all goes well, but it ain't over till it's over here. The only only thing he's missing is that fastest lap still held by Julian Altona, 12 seconds behind. Keep a watch here on Moran as he comes through one final time. We're going to watch him and the battle here between Holbum and Kinder. Looks like Seb's got it now after lap after lap of defensive the masterclass. They're still close to each other yeah, one more time. On now, Seb might want to make a defensive move to the inside a little bit, but uh, Cedric's not able to get there. So, again, the blocking rule. And, oh, there's a so close rejoin with Lover in there at the exit of turn 10B. I think Seb might have clipped him. I don't know that for a fact. White flag. And we'll check back on that lap car incident one more time as the number 78 of Bruno Miranda comes through. Royal Esports finds themselves in victory lane for the second time this season. Miranda will win from Road Atlanta, leading every lap from the pole position. Bruno's going to park the car quickly, and the battle persists for sixth here. Still the closest on the track. Cedric is still going here. Sebastian Kinder, he's got not much left in him. He's going to have one more lap to pull it together and try to keep this spot they're coming around this time by cedric still on has the button nothing left last they're push. both on the green last push of the button does uh, cedric decide to send it down the inside okay so there, now you see seb going to the little middle middle of the racetrack defensively remember the rule you're allowed one move and then you can't react to the driver behind you after that you're blocking gets through the chicane clean it's out out through the exit of the chicane down the hill through 11 into 12 and Seb Kinder well I, I tell you what Seb I, I, I'd uh, pat myself on the back that was a good hard race uh, same for Cedric good hard race for those two uh, those are something that you can go back and uh, uh, chill with in the uh, Vore discord server and uh, chat about uh, how clean you raced each other because uh, that was a pretty good uh, near master class from you guys a great battle for the both of them till the very end, and the best part of it, they all keep it clean until the checkered flag. Seb Kinder is going to come out with sixth. Cedric Holmbaum going to be sent back to seventh, but by no means a result to be upset about given that performance between the two. How about that final run for these two drivers, and how about the dominance from our winning man, Bruno Miranda? Your race results going to flash on the screen. It's Miranda over Julian Alta in second. Then it's going to be third, Penn. Patrick Zovazzi, fourth spot is going to be Pedro Bybel. Fifth is Craig Forsyth, sixth is Sebastian Kinder, and it'll be Cedric Holmboom in seventh with Finian de Kuna, then in eighth. Ninth is John Christensen, and around out the top ten, Gary Lovern, two laps down. Dan Inch comes home 11th, Diggs 12th, Strauss 14th, Van den Bosch, uh, excuse me, Strauss 13th, uh, Van den Bosch 14th, Hunter Smith 15th, and I think we got one more page here. Yeah, Hugo Gallus 16th, and Jordan Hell 17th. And that is your 17 car field from Road Atlanta. With the Road Atlanta Grand Prix concluded after 50 great laps of racing, we've got to talk to our top three here. The podium coming up next on FTN. Bruno Miranda, easier race winner. Julian Altina second. And Patrick Zovazzi, quiet race for the second and third drivers. And honestly, pretty quiet from our winning driver, too. Overall, it's Miranda's day. And it looks like right now, Patrick Zovazzi standing by. Gary, you'll be talking with our third place finisher as Zovazzi joins the broadcast booth. Patrick, congratulations. You were some great battles there on the racetrack all race long. Kind of that last stint. You're kind of just by yourself, but uh, bring it home for a podium finish. Tell us about your race and how about your day? Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so quality was okay, I guess, because of, uh, at the end of the, at the end of the quality, I wasn't really able to, imp even though I, I let some time. Um, race was really good. Like we, st I started on red uh, blacks with Julian, and then we were able to catch a uh, Cedric. And I was really lucky with with the overtake on him. Like I had the run on him, 
and such. And then um, second stint was so I saw Pedro lost it went wide at turn one, but he, like made it back after like five laps because of the uh, tire advantage. But then I saw that he had an incident on on his, on his uh, outlap. And I thought that, okay, this is my chance. And it, it, I was so worried that he's going to make it back, even though that we were on the <laughs> same compound. But yeah, I, yeah, I did it finally. Um, I lost, I had some chances already this season to make it to the podium. And I finally, I'm finally here. Finally. Uh, con congratulations. Yeah. And finally, you, you definitely earned it, my friend. Uh, any shout outs, anybody you'd like to say hi to while we have you here? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Sam. Sam had, Sam had actually a really good race after getting involved in, in some lap one stuff. So, yeah, I mean, P6 Roman is actually really good. Like, he didn't really expect it to be finishing that position. So, yeah, I mean, he had a really good race as well. He so. did. We watched him. Yeah, he, he was in a great battle there with Cedric there at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, congratulations, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week at uh, Milwaukee. I hope so. Yeah, thank you so much. Patrick Zovassi on the move after a third place finish. Tell you this much, we're going to move on to our second place driver right now, and that will be Julian Alton in the number 11. Quiet night, of course, for our top three guys who really pulled it together with that consistency. I think that's the same going for Julian as he come through. Gary standing by with our second place finisher, Alton, and returns to the podium. Hey, Julian. Hey, not a bad double race performance here today for you. I get a podium there at Nashville, get another podium here. Um, not quite enough pace for Bruno, who just kind of ran away with it, but you'll be happy to know that you broke up his Grand Slam uh, attempt. Uh, you got the purple lap, whereas he led every lap, got to win, and got the pull. But you broke it up. Tell us about your race, and uh, tell us about uh, uh, your strategy there to, uh, to at least salvage a P2 out of this. Yeah, I was saying to my teammates, I should probably implement a bonus point for fast slap at this point, because I've got a few <laughs> of those this season. But... Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to start a race on the blacks, which I thought was a good strategy. And it it was until I got held up by Cedric because he got around me at the start. So, um, yeah, that, that was that. Um, I, think, uh, I think I could have challenged Bruno for the win. Uh, it would have been close. I'm not sure if I could actually beat him, but it would have been very close uh, between us at the end there for sure. Um, but, yeah, it, it was it was nice to, to drive around this track uh, late in the day. It was very fast and flowy. Uh, had a lot of grip, so that made it a lot of fun to drive. Um, was a bit uh, worried about uh, hitting Pedro when he spun right in front of me. I don't know if you guys called that. I hope you guys did because I was scared uh, when it happened. <laughs> I uh, I tried to, to break as best as I could, but I still tapped him. I, I tried to go to the left and then he went to the left also. So it was a bit a uh, bit of a shame for him. I think it could have been a, a 2-3 um, for us. Uh, but yeah, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, yeah, just uh, really happy about the race overall for the team. Uh, we got a top 10 with uh, all cars except Dan. He finished 11th, so uh, he got close. Uh, it was a good day for us. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, he knows the drill. He he tells about this race, and he gets his shout-outs out of the way. It's like, you've been here before, but <laughs> congratulations on the P2. We'll see you next week at Milwaukee, which I know is one of your favorite tracks. And uh, we'll see if we can't get you another an, up another step on the podium for next week. Oh yeah, Milwaukee is going to be an evening race too. By the way, it's uh, oh. going to be a 2004 esque champ car. Okay. So hopefully without hopefully without the early attrition. But but, but yeah, um, but yeah, it's almost like I, I've I've done IndyCar leagues on iRacing for three. Yeah, what, what are you what are you doing? Here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, I, so, so polished, I don't know what I'm know doing. What doing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, congratulations. We'll catch you next week, buddy. Yeah, see you next week, Gary and Dave. Oh, he got you too. There we go. <laughs> Julian going to come home second tonight and once again back in the podium spot. Both Altana and Miranda making big games in the championship standing. An important race for the both of them and especially for Bruno Miranda who we're now going to be with. Of course coming in the broadcast booth. Pole position. You get it done leading every lap of this race from start to finish. You had full control out there and just about the quickest driver from the beginning to end. Bruno Miranda you win here in Road Atlanta. What's it like of course dominance to bring yourself back to victory lane thank you david thank you gary thank you very much i try to speak english in so -so do your time. best do your best <laughs> <laughs> so uh this track is very difficult uh, very dangerous and uh beginning the race uh i 
uh, use the the map three to save the fuel and the second stint too. Uh, and uh, when the last stint, I, I stay uh, with uh, uh, um, like a few uh, uh, more more fast and use the 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 red compounds. Uh, use it. Uh, try try to to push. Uh, thank you very very much. Thank you to uh, everybody. Uh, Julian uh, have a, a nice podium, and uh, I don't know if uh, the third place. Uh, I think the Patrick is third place, and uh, thank you so much. Uh, congrats, everybody. When we saw the difference in the tire compound, you mentioned the strategy all race long. You had to run on the alternates and the primaries. Was there anything important in particular you think that really helped you there? Anything that really got you that advantage as the race went on? Yeah, I kept pushing uh, the, the first stint, but I saved the fuel and kept pushing more I can. Uh, so uh, I think uh, is the my stint is good. The first and second, I think the third is uh, not not okay. I think uh, I am more better in third stint, but I saved the 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 race uh, because this track is very very fast and very dangerous to commit uh, some uh, mistakes. You know, despite the dangers, you held this one full control from start to finish, pushing through and getting the checkered flag once again. Now, last time we went to the Ovals, it was our race in Phoenix, the doubleheader. We saw some success out of you there. Next up, it's going to be Milwaukee. When we go back to the racing, taking those left turns, you think there's a chance to maybe come through in victory lane? Uh, so I, I hope <laughs> to stay, stay there. I, I love the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, my favorite tr uh, oval track, so I I take it. I hope to stay in the podium uh, because the 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 guys here is very fast, very very better guys, very very better guys. Uh, so I think uh, uh, it's to me hard to to stay in the podium, but uh, I try to to stay on top five on the podium. And hoping to see another top five run next week. Bruno Miranda, you get it done tonight and come home into victory lane in Road Atlanta. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dave. Sorry for my bad English. Thank you very no, much. No, it's totally fine. Great to have you here either way. Thanks for the time. 100%. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Bruno Miranda on the way. That is our podium ceremony tonight. Miranda, Altona, Patrick Zovazzi, your top three. And just like that, a night of racing at Road Atlanta has come to an end. We thank you all for watching live on FTN here, the Road Atlanta Grand Prix. And we'll be back next week as we return for the Milwaukee Mile in the VOR IR18 series. The championship battle is still getting heated up. And tonight you watch the racing from the virtual Michigan Raceway Road Atlanta. We'd like to thank the Velocity Online Racing League once again for letting us participate in the broadcasting action all throughout this Saturday and of course here in iRacing the one-stop shop for all your online sim racing needs it's the best simulator on the market so check them out at iRacing.com as we'll return to the broadcasting action Monday night it's going to be the Integrity Ignite series then the Octane series Tuesday and we'll be back Thursday night with the return to the Iora Cup series another exciting series back in action so keep an eye out for FTN's coverage all throughout the week and the rest of the month. I've been David Kreutz commentating and producing alongside Gary Godso all throughout tonight's racing and we hope you enjoyed tonight's coverage. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the stream and subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you all for your time and we hope to see you whenever we're live again on FTN. This has been coverage of the Road Atlanta Grand Prix in the Velocity Online Racing IR18 Series.